are in to week two of the McManless universe and we are rapidly approaching Elon Musk's first pay-per-view in charge of the company, the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. So let's go and see what's going to happen on tonight's edition of Monday Night Raw. <laughs> guys it's me bad jokes back at you once again with another video and today guys we've got episode number three of the mcmanless universe my total extreme wrestling 2016 series and if you wasn't here for last week's episode go back and watch it now but i'm going to recap it very very quickly we have new tag team champions in the revival, we had John Cena getting attacked by Shinsuke Nakamura. And we had the absolutely shocking reveal that nobody saw coming of the new owner of the WWE being the very controversial Elon Musk. And so let's see what this week's war can do to carry on from that. The first segment of the show sees Seth Rollins in the ring talking about his upcoming WrestleMania match with the Beast, Brock Lesnar. But he is very quickly interrupted by Paul Heyman, who Paul Heyman comes out and then just says to him, you're not ready for the Beast. The Beast come out here last week and put you in your place. How on earth do you think you're going to make it all the way to WrestleMania? And then, just as Paul Heyman is starting to walk away, Dean Ambrose comes out. And Dean Ambrose challenges Seth Rollins to a match for the main event of tonight's show. Which is, of course, accepted. And so, this segment gets us an A rating, which is a brilliant way to start off the show. Paul Heyman, of course, did a masterful job of improvising interactions with the crowd, as did Dean Ambrose, who improvised well. And the show, the angle, got the show off to a cracking start. So, yep, an A rating to start us off. Very, very happy with that. And now let's go and see what the next segment can do. And, oh! In a match which is rated a D plus, so very, very disappointing. The Revival have beaten Titus Worldwide, Titus O'Neil and Apollo Crews in a match that lasted 14 minutes and one second. And it says Scott Dawson's not suited to his gimmick. Neither is Wilder. Uh, Dana Brooke did some good work at ringside for Titus Worldwide. And then, what else? Everyone getting D pluses, apart from Titus O'Neil, who only got a D. So, yeah, don't think I'm going to be putting this match on for much longer. Uh, just put this match on in the first place, just to give the Revival another win, after they did win the tag team titles last week. Trying to make them look a bit dominant. I think I'm trying to make them look very good, because I have got some rather big plans for the Revival come Wrestlemania time. Next up, we are backstage with Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley who are just hanging out as Paige walks past them and she in fact brushes past Drew McIntyre on her way somewhere and Drew just kind of gives Paige the eye and just kind of checks her out as she does walk past him. So maybe, maybe something going on between them two in the future who knows you have to keep watching the series to find out we are back in the ring with braun Strowman versus jinder mahal and in a match which gets us a c rating braun Strowman gets the win by 9 minutes 27 by pinfall with a standing triangle choke so something a little bit different there from braun Strowman to get the win and it's still saying here that Strowman is not suited to his gimmick. And apparently Strowman was off his game. But he did still get a C+. Plus. So I'm quite happy with that. If that's him off his game. Jinder Mahal got a C. So yeah, 
pretty average match there. Not really too much else to talk about. As Braun Strowman is leaving the ring, he gets viciously attacked by Baron Corbin, Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre who beat him down and just send a message that they are the most powerful force in the WWE, not Braun Strowman. And so the segment gives us a C+. Jonathan Coachman weak at the announce table, yet there's not been any changes to the Raw announce team just yet. That is going to be for next week, definitely. I'm working on getting a couple of announces in. I've just not been able to get them in just yet. And so the, the segment deserved better announcing. The angle got the crowd hotter. And Braun Strowman came over really well in the segment. So that's very, very good. But unfortunately, the storyline between Strowman and McIntyre has lost some heat. So that's a little bit disappointing. We're going to have to have a look at getting that back next week. After that, we've got another match. It's Ruby Riot versus Bailey, And it gets us a D-plus for the segment. And Ruby Riot gets the win in 11 minutes 32 by pinfall after Liv Morgan distracted Bailey. And yeah, a little bit disappointed with that, with that match, with that rating, if I'm going to be honest. Ruby Wyatt had an in-ring performance of D-. Bailey got a D+. Plus, so maybe I should have gone the other way with the win. But I am trying to build up the Riot squad. I am a big fan of the Riot squad IRL. So I am trying to build them up a little bit. It says here that Ruby Riot is not suited to her gimmick. But other than that, everything else seems pretty positive. And so let's just move on with the segment. And then next up, we've got a Cruiserweight Fatal 4-Way match. And it gets us a D rating because apparently it had terrible wrestling and non-existent crowd heat. Bit, bit like 205 Live in real life, eh people? But it was Akira Tozawa versus Jack Gallagher versus Tyler Breeze versus Tony Nese. And it's Tyler Breeze that gets the win in 9 minutes and 5 seconds when Tyler Breeze defeated Tony Nese with the beauty shot. So maybe a little bit of a push coming for Tyler Breeze. Jack Gallagher was apparently really off his game. As was, as was Tyler Breeze. As was Tony Nese. So only one person, Akira Tozawa, was on his, game, on his game in this match. So that's a little bit disappointing. Jack Gallagher got an E+. Plus. He might not be lasting long. He might not be lasting long in my company if he keeps on giving ratings like that. Next up, Tyler Breeze, just following the match, has grabbed a microphone and he has said, I've just beaten three of the best cruiserweights on 205 Live. How about I come for the best? I want you, Buddy Murphy, for your cruiserweight title. Buddy Murphy then responds and he says, you know what? I am the best cruiserweight in the world and I am going to take you on and I'm going to beat you next week on Raw. And I'm going to prove that you should not even be in my league. So the rating gets us a D+. Plus. The announcing quality lifted the segment. And the Tyler Breeze versus Buddy Murphy storyline has now officially started with that segment. Next up, we are in Elon Musk's office. As he has been joined by Finn Balor and Dolph Ziggler. And they both want a shot at Bobby Lashley's Intercontinental title. So Elon Musk says, you know how we're going to do it? We're going to do it with you two having a match tonight. Whoever wins will get Bobby Lashley at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view for the Intercontinental title. So the segment gets us a C+. And Bala still not suited to his gimmick. And Elon Musk is still not looking that good either. But hopefully he will improve. Next up, we are in the ring as Ronda Rousey is taking on Dana Brooke. And Ronda Rousey gets the win in 7 minutes 58 by submission with the armbar. And she does make defence number 2 of her WWE Raw Women's title in a match which gets us a D+. Not really too much else really to be said about this. 
Ronda Rousey got a C plus, Dana Brooke got an E plus. So yep, just going to move on rather quickly from that. As after that match, the announcers are just hyping up the fact that we are going to see Jason Jordan back in the WWE at some point in the next few weeks. And back in the ring once again, we get Bobby Roode versus TJP. And in a match which gets us a C- rating, TJP gets the win over Bobby Roode. And it was a bit of a calamity between Bobby Roode and his tag team partner Chad Gable. Because Chad Gable came into the ring hoping to attack TJP, but he missed him, hit Bobby Roode. And that allowed TJP to get the win. So maybe a little bit of problems in between Bobby Roode and Chad Gable. Who knows? So the match gets us a C-. minus. Bobby Roode not suited to his gimmick. Neither is TJP. But Bobby Roode had an in-ring performance of C. TJP only got a D+. Plus. He's going to have to improve a little bit. TJP, I do like him, but we do need better ratings than that. And then backstage, Becky Lynch has got an interview and she goes off about how much she hates Ronda Rousey and how she really wishes WrestleMania was today because she just cannot wait to get her hands on Ronda Rousey. But when she does, she is going to rip her arm off and she is going to wave it about in front of the thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people at WrestleMania. And she's going to have Ronda's arm in one hand and she's going to have the Raw Women's title in the other. So this segment gets us an A, which is brilliant. That's a brilliant segment from Becky Lynch. I'm very, very happy with that. Next up, John Cena is in the ring and he's talking about how Shinsuke Nakamura defeated him and AJ Styles in a tag team match last week on SmackDown after Nakamura also attacked Cena on Raw this week. So he is hoping to get some sort of revenge and he wants that revenge to come at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. He wants Nakamura one-on-one. -on -one. Nakamura comes out and says, you know what? Come on! So that is the match all set for the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. Again, it's an A rating. Two A ratings in a row. That is very, very good. Nakamura enjoyed having the freedom to go off script and he performed well. That's very nice. Cole and Coachman were pretty weak at the announce table. But yep, yeah, that is the match all set up. Let me know who you think is going to win that match at Elimination Chamber. Let me know in the comments below. Following that, we are in the ring as Finn Balor takes on Dolph Ziggler in the match that Elon Musk made earlier in the night. And it gets us a B rating as Finn Balor defeats Dolph Ziggler in 18 minutes 56 with the 1916 to secure himself an intercontinental title match against Bobby Lashley at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. Finn Balor got a B- rating. Dolph Ziggler got a C+. Plus, so two decent ratings there. So I'm very happy with that. And that, of course, does set up the match at the pay-per-view. And immediately following that, to hype up that match, Leo Rush is distracting Finn Balor. And he tells Bobby Lashley to attack him. And that's exactly what Bobby Lashley does. He, Bobby Lashley beats Finn Balor into the mat. And then he stands over him and he says to him, you might have your match at Elimination Chamber, but it's not going to last very long. So the segment gets us a C-. Leo Russ was underwhelming as Bobby Lashley's hype man, but the performance of Balor was good in this segment. And then, wow, 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 Elon Musk with an F+. Plus. As the announcers have said he's got something very important to say next week on Raw. 
Oh, wasn't expecting that kind of a rating. Oh, ho, ho, that's not good. Let's let's run away from that very, very quickly. And now, oh, to get us back on track on the show, we have the match that was made in the opening segment. Seth Rollins versus Dean Ambrose. It's a B-rated match. It's a superb match. Seth Rollins beats Dean Ambrose in a one-on-one -on -one hardcore match. And Rollins gets the win with the pedigree. But we did see the referee get knocked out before the end of the match. And Kurt Angle came out to make the free count for Seth Rollins. And yeah, that's a very, very good match. Rollins and Ambrose, they've always had good chemistry. So it's no surprise that they was able to put on such a good match. And after that, Brock Lesnar tries to attack Seth Rollins. Tries to put Rollins through a table. But Rollins reverses it and he ends up putting Brock Lesnar through a table to end the show with an A-rated segment. Seth Rollins standing tall over the beast, Brock Lesnar. Lesnar and Heyman, of course, with the awesome chemistry. Segment deserved better announcing. Rollins and Lesnar has gained heat, so that's very good to see. Now let's see what kind of rating we are going to get for the show. As I'm just going to move myself over here just so I'm not in the way of the final rating. And it's a B. I'm happy with that. I am fairly comfortable with that. Apparently the crowd was disappointed at not getting any matches that had their match aim set as storytelling. A little bit of an oversight on my part. But the show did increase our popularity in 26 regions. So that's very, very good to see. And so that is where we're going to leave it for today, people. If you have enjoyed that video, please do let me know in the comments below. I love getting comments. And also, please do subscribe for more Total Extreme Wrestling content. I'm trying to push for the 400 subs. I am only four away as I record this. So please do consider subscribing. It would mean the absolute world to me. Follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash badjokesgaming. And follow me on Twitch for Football Manager 2019 streams. Twitch.tv slash badjokesgames. And yep, I'll be back tomorrow with more of this series with week two of Smackdown Live. Bye.